the internet, in particular internet video, of course, is by this point a rich community of languages. And yet the languages tend to exist in isolation from each other. Dot Sub has an approach to create a community of people who can actually speak to each other. Perhaps you could talk about that, Michael. Yeah, so um, one of the things that's sort of my favorite sayings is if a picture is worth a thousand words, how many words is a video worth? You know, when we're here talking about video and the concept of the power of just the, the storytelling and the emotional engagement of video is something that, you know, cannot be overemphasized. And one of the things that is, is really important, as everybody talks about, is emotional engagement and involvement because brands want to have the respect of the people they're trying to communicate with. So we're basically focusing on the 94% of the people in the world that don't speak English as a native language and knowing that they <coughs> like to buy product and services from companies that understand their needs and their, their markets and make an attempt to communicate with them. So we have the ability to communicate and translate videos into any language using Google Translate on the one end professional translation for most of our enterprise clients for their brand messages, their CEO speeches, their marketing messages, the entertainment business. And in the middle, there's a huge, rapidly growing crowdsourcing component where people have thousands uh, or tens of thousands of people that are very engaged with their audience. Adobe TV, for example, has 14,000 videos all about instructions on how to use Adobe technology products. And they estimate they have 30 million passionate users that are using the Adobe product. So their videos are professionally captioned in English by us and left to be translated in languages. And right now there's 68 languages that Adobe TV is translating. There's a spiritual mystic in India that has 10,000 hours of content yeah and 100 million followers. So we are finding content creators and content libraries and large audiences. And the one thing we've heard for the last day and a half about engagement, the best way to become engaged is to see a piece of media that moves you and invest 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of your time because you want your fellow countrymen to experience the same level of emotional engagement. So you invest the time in crowdsourcing with TED, the, the open translation program. So we find that the level of engagement around the world, because people know that traditional media companies don't understand their markets, are not gonna spend the time and money because there's not an immediately identified ROI. So there, there's a whole bunch of evidence that's not scaled yet because no one has done it where videos in other languages are having many millions of views in languages outside of English, outside, and no one is taking advantage of this opportunity. So we think there's a, a huge opportunity, not sure how to address it yet, but there's a, a lot of people around the world that are very, very anxious to be watching video. So I understand that the enterprise video is um, professionally translated. How accurate is translation on um, crowdsource <coughs> platforms? <coughs> Um, that's a really good question, and <coughs> without being pejorative, uh, the answer to the question in reality is the same way that you can guarantee the quality of writing on a Microsoft Word document. Um, Bill Gates did not create Word and stand behind the quality of what's written. Likewise, our technology is an enabling technology, <coughs> so all of the brands that use the crowd have a mechanism that's either called review or moderation. And none of the people, so this is zero of any of our clients, does what is traditionally known as open crowdsourcing. It's controlled crowdsourcing. Wikipedia is open. Any citizen can go enter an article to Wikipedia. All of our clients have someone send an email requesting a specific language and a specific translation, and they have to be given permission, and they uniquely have access. But none of the brands are publishing that content until a second person, either another member of the audience, reviews it, or in many cases we are moderating videos, not with native linguists who are very expensive, 
but with native speakers. And the native speakers are looking at the translation for basically two things. Number one, that the translation does not violate the ethical or moral code of the brand. I, they don't use profanity, they don't say things that are embarrassing, they don't you know, slander their competitors, and that the translation generally reflects what was intended in the media, but they're not correcting for spelling and they're not correcting for grammar. So surprisingly enough, we've had very, very little problem with people complaining about quality because people aren't gonna spend time doing something that they're not passionate about and they want to do a good job, and lots of people are creating leaderboards and actually creating virtual currency to award a, a point, an Adobe point or an IBM point for every minute of translation and then having leaderboards. So the way of the web of all of the uh, social media in terms of virtual currency is we're, we're integrating that with translation.